main thing I was known for is writing poems for uh, for particular occasions. I wrote a poem when the PT6 first ran up, then started up. I came here and it had $200 in my pocket, which was a lot more than it, it sounds like today, but it wasn't very much either. I found out that Pratt & Whitney was just beginning an operation here, beginning to look for people because they were about to manufacture uh, under license engines for the Korean War effort. So I started with them and we looked after uh, really the engineering aspects of license manufacture. What we did first, um, it was decided that uh, this uh, motley crew should go to Hartford and live in Hartford for about a year and uh, be sort of indoctrinated with, their, with, with, with how to design gas turbine engines, with their knowledge, pick their, pick their brains in fact. While this was going on, we in here in, in Longueuil designed an auxiliary gearbox for one of the Canadair airplanes. CL-44. For CL-44, yes. Uh, this was a huge, huge gearbox, and I think it was done uh, quite successfully. So in a few short years then, in the 1950s, you were a major part of a huge transformation of the company from overhauling piston engines to manufacturing these piston oh, absolutely, engines, yes. and then another yes. huge revolution to designing and manufacturing gas turbine engines. But yes, I think it was the first thing we realized that, yes, we, if we do a, a small engine like that, we want it to be a free turbine engine. The only way it seemed to us of doing this was to, to arrive at the famous opposed shaft concept, which has been the the, the, the main feature of the, the, of the PT-6, and which, uh, which in turn enabled um, a great many other advantages in terms of serviceability mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. ease of access and so on, and flexibility of gearbox area and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. I think one of the things that's often asked is, you know, what, what was the glue that held us together? And I think that, that we were quite disparate crew uh, but what held us together was an, a joint realization that we, we really have a tremendous opportunity here. We were all young people. I mean, many of us had started families. We realized that we were on, on, on a very um, a promising path there. And um, as, as innovators, as engineers, uh, it was a very exciting time to be able to go to work on a new game, on a new new plaything, you know. I know we were all very concerned that the engine would live up to the durability that we hoped it would. I mean, we were all very relieved when we, when we had the, the good reports that came out. We realized how many airports around the world the PT-6 could be seen. It became apparent to us that it was a game changer, an economic game changer in the world. It was only 12 years of production to produce the first 5,000 PT-6, and then remarkably only four years of production for the next 5,000 PT-6. We realized that really the, the PT-6 enabled the design of aircraft which themselves, with the, the, the performance, the capability of this aircraft, contributed a great deal to its opening up many areas of the world. Um, things that wouldn't have been possible before that, or economic before that, became economic. So the PT-6 is, um, I would put, uh, put it among the dozen or so items which um, really shaped the world that we, we live in today. It shaped the world that we know and we take for granted. You see, there's a vast difference between that and the piston engine. Piston engine never got up very much beyond, what, 1,000, 1,500 hours. That was a good life. 
on condition and uh, mm -hmm. if you would like to go hard time it's 1800 hours to a hot section and 3600 hours to an overhaul but we have uh, engines uh, with a TBO of uh, 10,000. It's an amazing success. There are very, very few aero engines which have a similar kind of success. So here we are 50 years later. The team that you headed up from a design point of view and the team that you were part of in terms of uh, manufacturing and, and developing it really uh, left us an amazing legacy. Well, thank you. It was it was rewarding to do it. It was rewarding to do it. The date of this was November 17, 1959. No gentle song of birds so sweet, no trill from hidden branch so clean in leafy fall. No call from loony lake at dusk so still that, once the echo dead, the timeless wall of waiting trees stands to the night and moon a hushed phalanx of frozen sentinels to hark. No smoother blows the hot monsoon, nor joyous more the chimes of Easter bells. More placid not the Mona Lisa's smile than our engines first compliant were in truly un-T-34-ish style. With no ex offense to Pratt and Whitney, sir, but by a sonnet, PT6, abide. I'll save the ode till you are certified.